in a deficit, there is always a risk that you will lose muscle mass. But what we can do is minimize that risk. Every item of clothing, despite how often I might wash it, is now covered and caked in cat hair because the cat's hair is obviously white and it's, it's just everywhere. I can't escape it. So what's actually occurring here is almost like a, a hybrid video where I'm obviously gonna speak about something that I'm witnessing online, that I'm viewing online, but it's not so much I'm gonna analyze this, I'm actually gonna add to the conversation. And that's a, a video by Meg Squats and I'm not making any progress, what's now? And I've spoken before, I'm a big fan of Meg. I think she produces some great stuff. I've been following her for countless years now. I mean, on and off, but I kind of got into her content when she kind of first really started coming on the scene back in the powerlifting days with like Max Tooney and that lot So it must have been near eight years ago or something along those lines And she's consistently produced some pretty good content And then I saw this video where it was sent to me actually Talk about making progress and I thought it would be a great idea for me to add to that conversation And discuss why else might you not be making progress and what could you do to change that Also might tickle a new original video style in the next couple of weeks Not going to give too much away but it's something new something I haven't actually done before And hopefully you might like the, the change of pace But yeah obviously before we crack on the video we're going to crack on with the video If at any point throughout this entire video you decide that you like what I have to say And actually you just tolerate me in general Then please do consider liking the video as 1300 likes on this video is the goal If you haven't already please do also consider clicking the the red button down below to subscribe to the channel and maybe even the bell next to it so you get notified when I upload every week twice a week. If you have a question you want me to answer at the end of the next video then please do consider dropping it down below in the comment section for comment question of the week and I shall answer one of them next week. So shower caps are the current headwear trend. They're, they're roomy which is good for my big head and they're also kind of comfortable so I'm liking this new new style. Mm, the two feather blue and the blue could kind of match. So what we're gonna do we're gonna skim through a few bits of Meg's video just to get a bit more context about the subject matter at hand and also to hear what she had to say regarding why you might might not be making any progress but then I'm gonna kind of do my bit and add to it as well and strength wise obviously I wanted to continue getting stronger so I looked at my rate of progress and let's say I put on 50 pounds of strength on my squat in the past five months I then assumed that in the next five months I could do another 50 and if you've been lifting for several years then you know that that reasoning was stupid and wrong and I obviously did not do that you may add 50 pounds to your squat in a year you may gain 10 pounds of muscle in year but that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to replicate that the next year in a lot of cases the progress will slow down and the longer and longer you're training provided a lot of variables have been hit like training efficiency and all sorts then the slower and slower progress gets so gaining 50 pounds in your squat in a year is fantastic maybe next year you might gain 30 pounds the next year you might gain 20 and then maybe 10 i'm not saying that's what's going to happen but typically progress isn't linear and progress does slow over time you're not going to have a clear picture of whether or not you've stalled unless you have the following first you need a clear picture of success. Next, you need some information on the key progress indicators that you're going to track and monitor. Next, you need realistic expectations, which is where I went wrong. Yeah, no, these are all very fair points. Is obviously you have to identify what success looks like for you. What is progress? How can you tell you're not making progress anymore? Has your squat not improved? Or has it actually not improved? Or does it not feel like it's improved? Is your body weight not changing? If that's an indicator you want to follow, so many things along those lines, and also ensuring, like I said earlier, they have realistic expectations. It's understanding that your rate of progress is going to be much quicker earlier in your fitness journey when compared to later in your fitness journey once you become an intermediate lifter. But there are a few things that we can do to kind of alter or maybe adjust how slow it does get, which I will cover shortly. Specifically, you're stalling on a certain lift. Here are my suggestions. You may want to consider improving your technique. So when it comes down to kind of ensuring that you are going to maximize rate of progression, there are things that you can look at doing differently. So obviously Meg covers here, she speaks about improving technique, and that's a big one to address. Although your lift may not be improving, is that lack of improvement due to the fact that you've stalled, or is that lack of improvement due to the fact that there are some technical issues that need to be addressed? And once you can then become more technically efficient with that lift are you then potentially going to then re 
accelerate that progress again. We're all too quick to say, oh, I'm not progressing, I, I can't do any more. But there is there's usually something we can do. And technique is really, I wouldn't say it's an easy one to change, but it's an easy one to identify that needs to be changed. So what I mean by that is, is it's quite easy to identify that technically something needs to be addressed, but making that adjustment and addressing it is a bit more of a process. So again, if you're squatting and you feel like your knees are caving a bit more and that could be preventing you from lifting heavier weights, then what can you do to address that knee cave? Could it be due to glute weakness perhaps? Could it actually be a foot issue, inability to kind of sufficiently spread the toes and create that kind of base of the foot, therefore lean to the arch to collapse and then for the knees to come in with it. There are so many things it could be, so it's about identifying what's holding you back technically and how can you make that technical improvement potentially necessary to then re-accelerate your progression. And that doesn't just come down to isolating lifts, that doesn't just come down to getting better at squat bench and deadlift, that can come down to hypertrophy and all sorts. So if you're looking at obviously gaining more muscle mass, well how can you optimize the movement to best align with the muscles you're looking to target? Are you doing a lap pull down but are you actually swinging a bit more than you should? Are you not controlling the movement sufficiently? Is there a technical issue that needs to be addressed to then better bias the muscles you're looking to target, therefore hopefully accelerate that rate of progression that those muscles will experience through being worked more efficiently through essentially a better movement pattern and a better quality of movement. So again, improving the quality of your lifts through a technical standpoint doesn't necessarily mean you're just looking to improve strength of certain movements, but also could mean you're looking to improve what muscles are working to then better enhance hypertrophy to so the building of muscles. So again, it, it depends. And even when it comes down to like cardio-based activity, could you run more efficiently to then become a better runner, therefore exert less energy when running because you're being more efficient, therefore be able to then perform for longer and go maybe a bit faster. Technical improvements can span across all goals. It doesn't necessarily need to be isolated to powerlifting, bodybuilding, whatever it is. It's really isolated to anything that requires a technical aspect. You can usually typically improve that technical aspect regardless of what it is. And last, if you're selling on a lift, again, are you on a program? Are you on a program that prioritizes that lift or those lifts specifically? Yeah, a lot of times people say, oh, I can't really seem to make much progress. I was doing really good to start for the first year, but I haven't really gone further since. And obviously, it's typically quite a lot easier to make progression in the first year because you're so new to the stimulus of training, you will almost respond pretty well to anything to an extent. But if you're not following a program, and you're not tracking what you're doing, how do you know if you're stalling? And also, how do you know if you're getting better? So again, essentially, it comes down to if you go into the gym and kind of wing it every session, granted, if you enjoy doing so, I fully support it and think, you know, you've got to do what's best for you, depending on what your goals are, obviously. But if you say, look, I want to get stronger on squat bench and deadlift, I want to gain muscle mass here and here, but I wing it every session, you, you don't really have that structure to follow. And you, you're, especially when it comes to training, it's quite a regimented approach. There are so many different ways to approach training, not necessarily any right or wrong, just preference. How do you know which way is best for you? if you don't know what you're actually doing? And how can you track progression if you aren't tracking what you're doing consistently? So it's about getting a structured program, following it, sticking to it to the T, and a lot of the cases, these structured programs are probably going to be quite boring because a lot of them will require you to get really good at the same movements over and over again to then become technically more efficient at those movements, but also to optimize progressive overload, which is going to really help with the development of strength and also the development and building of muscle mass as well. And same thing when you look at the cardio aspect of things, getting better at something by doing it more often is going to help you perform regardless of what your goals are. Meg basically speaks about these things of what you can do to improve, like essentially hypertrophy, so development of muscle. Speaks about obviously training more frequency, not overtraining, so not doing too much, and also ensuring that you're fueling the body sufficiently. I'm going to kind of break them down a bit further but also add a couple of my, my own ones. So training the area with more frequency is definitely yes. If you have weak body parts, depending on what the body parts are, you can certainly train them more frequently. Larger muscle groups typically have the potential to output a lot more, which typically results in you shifting a lot more weight respective to that muscle group. Therefore, recovery might be slower for those muscle groups, which is why you can typically train smaller muscle groups more frequently because they obviously don't lift as much or output as much, therefore can typically recover a bit faster. But if you've got like lagging biceps, for example, then you could probably train the biceps four times a week if you wanted to, decreasing daily volume, but increasing weekly volume through additional frequency. Provided you program them properly, you could probably justify training the quads, for example, three times a week if they really were a weakness for you, but you'd have to be quite careful with the programming. Although we know that the quads are hyper responders to stretch-mediated hypertrophy, meaning that length and position dominant movements and full range of 
motion movements like the hack squats etc etc are going to be good for the quads those movements tend to promote a lot of muscle damage which then can slow recovery therefore on the third day for the additional volume we typically maybe want to reduce length and position dominant movements and maybe favor short and position dominant movements that may not necessarily be quite as good for hypertrophy but will allow us to get additional frequency and volume in whilst also limiting muscle damage therefore not hindering recovery. Training with more frequency is definitely a yes, but your programming will need to vary depending on the muscle group you're looking to train more frequently. Not overtraining, that kind of goes into the realm of recovering. Are you recovering enough? And then obviously Meg does go on to cover a couple of these as well. Are you pushing it too hard in the gym? And by too hard, I mean you're doing too much volume, so junk volume. Are you not giving yourself sufficient time to recover? Is your training intensity too high without any periods of lower intensity for that recovery? Are you training it more too frequently, potentially, where you're not giving you that chance to recover as well so therefore you're not allowing it to grow so many things in that realm which i'm going to elaborate on very shortly are you eating enough protein yeah obviously i know we spoke about it in the last video i believe developing muscle mass is a signal driven process not like a calorie driven process if you're in a deficit for a long period of time energy wise you're not going to have much to play with therefore you're going to find it really hard to drive that signal and drive that progression so eating more so being in a surplus is going to allow you to hopefully drive that signal to then enhance progression and obviously protein is very important when it comes to the building and repairing of muscles therefore regardless of whether you're in a deficit or a surplus you should really try and aim for that sufficient protein intake which is very much dependent on your goals and your body weight meg obviously speaks about how you can keep progressing so through keep protein high change your focus making changes to your program try calorie surplus and train harder and all of these are very valid points obviously i've already mentioned the protein but when it comes to like change your focus this is very much dependent on what your goals are and what progress actually looks like to you make a change your program again make changes if changes are necessary but it might not necessarily be a programming issue it might actually be a, a technical issue i mentioned this earlier regardless of what your goals are you want to try and lift in an efficient manner so for example if your quads aren't growing but you're only squatting half range of motion because you don't want to go too low because you can't be bothered that might be limiting your progress so improving the technique of your lift there could really help the growth of your muscles so that's not necessarily a programming change that needs to be made that's the technical change that needs to be made obviously calorie surplus like i said more energy can help drive that signal to grow muscle mass and also help drive that signal to help you gain strength training harder is a big one as well so obviously a lot of times i've mentioned this before people are notoriously quite bad at gauging how hard they really are training they might think they're training close to failure but they could actually be a long way off which is why i think for a lot of people it can be really great to film your lifts and also to be honest with yourself did you really have one left in the tank or did you actually have three or four and we know that kind of green zone for hypertrophy is anywhere from like zero to four reps in reserve. But if you think you're at four reps in reserve, but you're actually at seven or eight, then you're kind of missing out a good chunk of gains there. So be honest with your training intensity. Are you training hard enough? And obviously, like I said, Meg does mention this as well, but the big thing is also consider recovery. Not only do you have to consider are you eating enough, but what's your stress looking like? Are you stressed? Has work been quite hard? Family life getting a bit stressful? Are things external to the gym holding you back? And some things we can't change, but at least we can identify that that is a factor that will hopefully pass eventually, and this period of slower progression might just be a blip. What's your sleep looking like? Are you actually sleepy enough? Are you going to the gym training hard, but because you haven't slept enough, that training is only hard because the lack of sleep is making it harder than it should be are you training really well but you're not recovering enough through sleep and through other means such as et etc etc therefore that's limiting your ability to actually grow and develop and recover are you over fatigued you're actually due a deload perhaps are you potentially re regressing or stalling because you haven't deloaded for a long time and you need that good period of recovery so you can get cracking once again so i think when it comes down to identifying what could be halting your progress is obviously all the things Meg's mentioned, but we'll kind of isolate a few of the top ones. This is not in any order, these are just a few big ones. Are you recovering enough? Are you fueling your body enough? Are you training well enough? And that can consist of training technique, that can consist of training intensity, that can consist of training volume and frequency. Are your expectations realistic? And are you remaining consistent with whatever you're doing? Because realistically, if, if you're eating enough, depending on your goals, if you're recovering enough, if you're training well enough, if your expectations are realistic and you're remaining consistent with whatever you do, there is a high likelihood if you tick all those boxes, you will still progress. Granted, progression might be a bit slower than you would like, but that might fall into the realm of realistic expectations of has progression slowed, not because you're doing something wrong, but just because you're a bit more advanced with your lifting and it will naturally slow. Or has progression slowed because maybe you're not being as consistent as you could be? Has progression slowed because your eating's been a bit all over the place or your sleeping's been a bit iffy? Or maybe you've been letting technical things slip in the gym or maybe you've just being kind of wing it in the gym and maybe not pushing as hard as you used to push. And the thing I love about fitness and training, provided you're a healthy individual, 
in a lot of cases, you can likely directly control the progress that you make. So if you want to get bigger, you want to get stronger, you want to get fitter, you've got to ask yourself, are you, are you training hard enough? Are you consistent? Are you recovering enough? Are you sleeping enough? Are, are you doing all the things you can do to get better? If you're not getting better, in a lot of cases, at least one of those things could be done better. If you're still not improving, what else could you do better? It's all about identifying what could you do to improve how you do something to then improve the results that you gain from whatever you're doing. I just wanted to add to this conversation, I think this is a great video from Meg and I think it's really good regarding what can be done to make progress and hopefully my, my two cents has maybe elaborated a bit further or given my opinion on what can you do to actually experience progress. You may find that if you make these technical adjustments or maybe eat a bit more depending on what your goals are, that you almost go through like that newbie gains again. We got kind of burst of progress that you kind of experienced when you first started training. The hypertrophy coach actually did a good video on this speaking about he almost experienced newbie gains like five years into training, like 13 years into training, just because he just did something significantly better. What do you think is holding you back? And do you feel that, if you're being honest, could you do something better? And if you feel you could do something better, I'm curious to know, what do you think you could do better? Let me know in the comment section. There are certainly things that I could do better to help improve my results. I am, I am human and I'm not perfect and I could always improve. Now we're gonna very quickly crack on with comment question of the week. We often hear that if you're losing weight, there is a risk of losing muscle too. If you're losing weight at a reasonable rate, i.e. not too aggressively, is this a real risk? In a deficit, there is always a risk that you will lose muscle mass. But what we can do is minimize that risk by ensuring that we're maintaining strength. That's a big thing to focus on is when you are in a deficit period, maintaining your strength is gonna be one of the best ways of maintaining muscle mass. So push it in the gym, make sure you're recovering enough, not doing too much volume, all that good stuff. If you're able to, maybe even try and improving your strength in that deficit period, because in a lot of cases, if you deficit properly and not for too long and not too aggressively, there's a good chance that you can maintain all of your muscle mass. So just because you're in deficit doesn't mean you're gonna lose something. Sure, you could lose something, but that loss is likely due to the fact that something could have been done better. If you do it well and do it sensibly, there's a high chance that you can maintain all of your muscle mass. Some people are big fans of like mini cuts in which they'll do like a really aggressive cut where they'll lose anywhere from like 0.75 to 1.25% of their body weight every week for three to eight weeks because in that period, because it's quite a short period of time, you likely won't lose any muscle mass. But as the deficit period goes on for longer, the chance of losing muscle mass increases. So what I would typically say is don't deficit for too long, don't do it too aggressively and make sure you're maintaining your strength whilst ensuring recovery and everything is high. And if you're looking to really optimize ability of muscle you kind of ideally want to be in a slight surplus or like massing phase for as long as possible to really improve and enhance how likely you are to drive that signal necessary for muscle growth. That is it, that is a video. Like I said at the start of the video, if at any point you decide you like the video, then please let me know you like the video by liking the video. 1300 likes is the goal, so if we reach that, I would very much appreciate it. If you haven't already, please do consider clicking the red button down below to subscribe to the channel, and maybe even the bell next to it, so you get notified when I upload every week, twice a week. And if you too have a question you want me to answer at the end of the next video, then please do consider dropping it down below in the comment section for comment question of the week, and I shall do so. Thank you for tolerating me. Thank you for tolerating my apparently intra-shower look that I'm rocking today, and thank you for tolerating the video.